I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Ben Jorgensen, the co-founder of Lattice Exchange and the CEO and co-founder of Constellation Network. Ben, welcome to the show and thanks for being here. Ashton, thank you, man. Thanks for taking the time to do this. Uh, really great to meet you. Likewise, I'm excited to dive into these amazing blockchain projects that you're working on. And I'd just love to kick off the interview by starting to hear about your background in the space and what got you interested in helping to grow the blockchain industry. Yeah, great question. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I've lived in San Francisco for about 10 years. And um, so technology is part of your DNA when you live there and you live in a product mindset. Um, but I built, a, I built my first company and sold it in, in 2015 that was all about aggregating digital music and dynamically placing it uh, inside ads uh, so that we had a very unique experience. And so um, once I sold the business, I kind of took my life and said, I'm going to do a, what they call a search fund. What am I as a leader? Um, what is my network like? And what is the next big thing? Uh, and as such, I, uh, I, I came across blockchain as one of the most fascinating spaces uh, out there with the potential of, uh, of collecting community uh, sentiment. Um, I also built uh, a restaurant, a fine dining restaurant called Gozu in San Francisco. Um, and really kind of what my thesis was, was really about how communities come together to share new ideas and thoughts. And food is a very common thing, but... Uh, mm -hmm. In blockchain, there are these subcultures of families that bind together and never meet each other in the wor real world. And there is this kind of unspoken trust and understanding that you're not alone in this world. And so fascinating things are being built, not just from a technological perspective, but also from an emotional perspective. Um, and so I, I first was introduced to, to blockchain by working as the chief revenue officer for a company called Exponential Organizations, uh, which is which is kind of a derivative of the best New York Times bestselling book called Exponential Organizations, written by Salim Ismail, that talks about how corporations need to adopt new technologies like blockchain in order to evolve industry practices and be relevant for the future. Mm hmm. Very cool. And yeah, this is yeah. the growth that we're experiencing right now uh, is exponential. Uh, and we'll dive into the details here. But I want to kick it off for the viewers to get a high level overview of, you know, people understand Bitcoin, they understand Ethereum, there's all these other protocols that are working on different things. Can you give a high level overview of Constellation Network, how it's helping grow the space, making it more secure and what's unique? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of what we looked at were, you know, how is blockchain evolving today? Uh, and with Bitcoin as the first protocol, there was really no application uh, support for developers. Developers can't really build robust applications with Bitcoin beyond adding Bitcoin to an application. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then Ethereum kind of popped up. And while they were still a synchronous chain, the protocol of Ethereum uh, was more of a communications protocol than 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 what we that we than we typically see um, in technology, uh, and so they created smart contracts as the first application that was a disintermediary between uh, two parties, so removing that trust uh, and programming elements into this contract that when they're met, they're executed. And so, what Constellation evolved is said, "Hey, we think there's a different base layer protocol." So we're this third iteration protocol that's around uh, taking packets of information or packets of data, securing that as it goes from A to B to C in a scalable, meaningful way. So a lot of our protocol is meant to integrate with existing applications, like mm -hmm. adding immutability and features and functionalities around auditability in an Uber application. What happened to my payment process? payment that it was processed, what trips were, were I on, um, did I go on, data privacy, all these things that are starting to become a hot topic are all around the data, big data narrative and initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where really Constellation saw an opportunity was to create a scalable protocol that could be integrated in any application. Very cool. And yeah, it sounds like you guys have really nailed it on the head because Constellation Network has been growing quite quickly. Um, you know, and, and even quicker than the space is growing right now, which is really fast. Uh, so that's exciting. Um, can you talk about 
the the biggest partners and the funders that you've had and that have helped with this such accelerated growth? Yeah, absolutely. We um, we kind of stuck our teeth in, into uh, working with the federal government, and the reason we focus on the federal government is we could, we spent about uh, a year and a half uh, meeting with pretty much every enterprise team that were building out blockchain tech uh, solutions. Um, but what we focused on, what we saw was there wasn't a clear opportunity to scale blockchain technology. You're you're kind of pitching it to emerging uh, t innovation teams, which don't they don't have typically scalable budget. Uh, and so a lot of our, our focus was to shift to the federal government because um, they're actually the leaders in the forefront of, of innovation right now, which is kind of antithetical to what most people think, that the government's mm -hmm. slow and cumbersome. But if you think about uh, the government having the best interest in, in uh, their country and securing their country, data uh, protection, I mean, look at what we're going through at the election. Um, on ballots and how they're accounted for and who's mm -hmm. touching them. Um, we're starting to approach a, a whole new world where the government is actually leading the forefront of innovation. So we, um, about a year, a little over a year ago, we engaged with the United States Air Force to provide a secure communications protocol, that evolved protocol uh, that could securely take packets of information uh, and transfer it to different agencies in the government, as well as to their commercial partners in a very secure way. And this actually hasn't been done because every organization in the, in the United States, Air, uh, military in general, they're redefining what their data strategies are to meet the digital infrastructures of today and what kind of the onset of 5G networks have brought on. So it's a really fascinating time to, to be this third generation blockchain and protocol, if you will. Mm -hmm. That's super interesting, Ben. And, and I understand where you're coming from, where you're saying that usually people think that you know, the government is slow to adopt new regulations or new technology. But when they do adopt it, they've decided that it is worthy. And, you know, it's something that uh, will pave the way for others to adopt it very quickly because a trusted organization has adopt this, adopted this. And I think it is really the key time, as you mentioned, you know, not just the ballots, but everything to do with secure communications and just cybersecurity, uh, especially at the government level, is, is needed to have the utmost security in that technology. So congratulations on, on that. Uh, and you mentioned enterprises. Yeah, go, keep going. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, it's really fascinating to be at the forefront of these conversations because they're redefining their standards for how we send data and the process for collecting, transferring in a secure way. Mm -hmm. uh, the government's been very open around using micro payment, payments mm -hmm. for, for licensing of software and using that, uh, using cryptocurrency as a, as a means to account for uh, usage-based software. Um, so we are actually building some really cool things that in incorporate not just alternative networks, but also digital currency there. Uh, and they're, they're moving faster than the enterprise space, mm -hmm. which, is, which is really mind-boggling. You think that, that that enterprise leads innovation, um, but I would say quite the opposite. Um, and so it, it's been fun to kind of work between both worlds. Now, we do work with many enterprise organizations. We're actually working with a group called Space Isaac which is a space consortium built by Lockheed Martin, an aerospace dedicated to identifying threat vectors in space between uh, commercial, and pu uh, uh, commercial and public sector, so private and public sector, and how they use data from satellites. Uh, we're also part of the MOBI uh, initiative that uh, where we're the ones creating um, a standard for how autonomous vehicles share data. Uh, a lot of data is collected around LIDARs, uh, LIDARs are used to kind of create spatial awareness, uh, and then they feed that in to kind of analyze how an autonomous vehicle works. So we're actually working across not just the federal government, but many partners, uh, both enterprise and public. Very cool. And there is definitely a lot of enterprise adoption going on right now and institutional interest and in, in investment in this space yeah. throughout 2020, which is, I think, bringing a lot of extra legitimacy. And, you know, by now, everyone knows everything in here uh, that where there's value to the, provided to services like government organizations is legitimate. But people that at first were just, are still sitting on the fence now are sort of jumping into this technology to try to take advantage of it as well. And because of the growth of the industry uh, this year uh, in Bitcoin alone, but also in the DeFi space, which is where the exponential growth has really, has really kicked it up. You know, it's done a tenfold increase 
in the value locked into these decentralized finance applications uh, just since Q1 of this year. And that is almost unheard of in, in any industry to, to grow that quickly. And I know that Constellation Network and your team is also working on building the Lattice Exchange, which is a DeFi app. Uh, if you could talk about what you've done there and, and how you've really capitalized on these opportunities to bring <coughs> value, um, that would be great. Yeah, the next step is Lattice Exchange. We just released our, our, our token right now. And uh, we are proud to le uh, release it on Uniswap as we truly believe in the decentralized um, space. And you look at centralized ex uh, exchanges as having just so many, um, you know, lack of transparency. And so, you know, the highlights of the space around automated market making algorithms are coming to the forefront as people just don't want to deal with these centralized exchanges. Governments are cracking down on CEOs um, because there are shady policies being done. And it makes me prouder than ever to be building meaningful technology that brings value uh, to people in this space. And so our focus over the next six months is to deploy um, our platform. Uh, our, our platform will release in be beginning of December. Um, early next year, we'll introduce the, the governance of our network, which we are pushing to be truly decentralized and owned by, uh, by the community that own uh, Lattice tokens. Uh, we want them to be the ones responsible for creating value in the exchange um, so that we kind of shift what it means to be a part of, of this crypto trading world and give that ownership back to people. Um, as such, we'll be introducing uh, improved uh, uh, features around uh, zero uh, trading settlement fees, all things that are plaguing the existing uh, DeFi space right now so that we can make it easier for retail investors uh, to build predictable businesses on top, not having to worry about dynamic and volatile um, uh, gas fees. So all these things are really kind of the features and stepping stones to bridging traditional financial world with the, which the digital asset create ecosystem. Very cool. And if the viewers are looking to learn more about the Lattice Exchange or get involved as a community member and also learn about Constellation Network, what's the best way for them to jump in and get involved? Yeah, I would say um, if you're looking to get involved and build your own application with Constellation, we're early in those days and we're building out uh, a funding arm called the Stardust Collective where we're kind of looking at unique uh, ideas uh, around um, ways that support uh, data privacy uh, and build robust applications on top of Constellation. So constellationnetwork.io. Um, we're also in our Telegram. I jump in all the time and give diatribes on the State of the Union and conversations and engage with people one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Lattice.exchange is also um, the Lattice website where you'll get info on some of our incredible backers, such leaders in the space like GSR, one of the best uh, market makers in the world, uh, and liquidity providers, uh, all the way to uh, GDA, FBG Capital, an alphabet fund. Um, so you can le learn a lot there uh, and just reach out to us in Telegram. Sounds great. I'll leave those links in the description box below for the viewers as well. Thank you so much for taking the time, Ben. You guys are really working on some really interesting stuff. I'm wishing you all the best moving forward with both Lattice Exchange and Constellation Network. And let's follow up in the near future. Addison, thank you so much for the time. And I really appreciate the great questions. This has been fun, man. Hope to see you soon.